Hi, I'm Phyllis, southernfrugal.com. Today, I'm going to fix some cranberry raisin loaves. Now, I fixed these oh, a week or so ago, but I made muffins. And uh, Mr. Bucky said, those are the best muffins I have ever tasted. So I thought, okay, I'm going to make these for Christmas, only I'm going to make them in a loaf pan. Actually, I'm going to make two loaf pans. Now, I'll be using, let me show you. These are a little shorter than most loaf pans, and these are the uh, Norpro loaf pans, and they're perfect for like meatloaf and stuff like that, and they're even good for bread, but they're not as tall as regular loaf pans, plus they're a lot thicker, and so I have to actually bake these on the lower shelf in my oven so I have a good, you know, crust all around, so anyway regular loaf pan will work for this and it's, it's going to make two loaves so first thing we want to do I'm making this by the way all in my Hamilton Beach food processor which I have absolutely fallen in love with it's very light I can pick it up with one hand and I, I use it all the time now it's just easy to get out from the cabinet and plug up and go and plus the uh, top is uh, uh, easy the little uh, bowl for the top of it is real easy just put it in the dishwasher so uh, I got this I was trying to remember I just can't remember because I got one that I didn't like I think at Walmart or I'm not sure or Big Lots one of those places anyway I paid $29.99 for it and I looked on Amazon and they've got it for $26.99. Of course, if you didn't have the Prime, you'd have to pay shipping, so that'd probably equal out. But anyway, uh, uh, Amazon is definitely competing with Walmart and other stores for sure. So anyway, let me move y'all back a little bit. And we're going to do the dry ingredients first in the food processor. So. The first thing to go in is going to be one and three-fourths cups of English walnuts. Now, when I grind these up, it's probably only going to be about one and a fourth to one and a half cups. So I'm going to dump those in first. And then this is one cup of old-fashioned oats, whole grain. So I'm going to dump those in. And we're going to uh, add, once we get this ground up, we're going to add it to some flour for the dry ingredients. So, all right, it'll be a little loud, but it won't take, but it just maybe not even a minute. Oh, why don't I plug it up? Yeah, it will barely reach to my plug over here when I do this on the my little cooktop thing. All right, now we're ready. It's all plugged in. Okay, here we go. We'll just take just very short length of time. about got it didn't take that long so now I'm going to put this in my dry ingredients now I have here two and a half cups I've actually got bread flour but and, and I wanted to use bread bread flour because there's more gluten in the bread flour so this is uh, two and a half cups and I did not sift it before I just took it right out of the bag and to this we're going to add one tablespoon of baking powder. Now this is not baking soda, it's baking powder. Just dump that in. Kind of mix it around a little bit. And now we're going to dump the uh, ground up walnuts and the ground up oats in with the flour. And don't do like that. I dumped this thing in. I thought I was holding it, but I wasn't. Now we're going to reuse this again. Oh, there goes fire trucks down our street. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're going to put it back on there. And we'll mix the walnuts and the flour 
and the oats all together. And of course the tablespoon of baking powder is in here too. So we just want to mix that up real good. Now I did not use any salt at all. None. Alright, so we're going to set this aside. And now we're ready to do our wet ingredients. So that's going to be two large eggs. Oops. I've been baking too much recently. I'm just not real organized now. All right. So to the food processor, I'm going to add two large eggs. And I'm going to add one-third of a cup. And I am using the extra light tasting olive oil because it says on here that it's good for stir frying and baking. Now I used this when I made the muffins. You cannot tell that it's olive oil in there. So one third of a cup. And I'm going to use one banana. Now th this is the same bananas we put in smoothies previously frozen, which is why it's kind of dark looking. So we're going to put that in. Now this banana kind of acts like an egg when you make muffins. It helps hold everything together. All right, and I'm going to add in there one half cup of just regular sugar. And this is two apples peeled and just cubed up. And I'm using those Oh, th these are actually gala apples, two of, two of them. All right, so that's all of our wet ingredients. So we're going to just grind all this up now. Here we go. Now to make this really, really good, we're going to go ahead and put in about a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. I'm just going to like pour it in. It's about one teaspoon and about a half a teaspoon. Again, that's just pure vanilla extract. All right, here we go. all there is to it and I love it because I just rinsed this uh, food processor out a little bit and put it right in the dishwasher. Alright so now we've got our wet ingredients and they're going to go right in to the dry ingredients. Let me see if I can hold that little thing this time. Alright right in. Now those apples are going to add a lot of moisture, so we're really not going to add any other kind of liquid to this. Y'all know when you cook apples, they just really have a lot of moisture in them. Let's see if I can sit that there, get all that out of there. All right, now we just want to hand mix this. Get it all moist. Now, if you don't have any loaf pans, you can actually make this uh, in a tube pan. You just put the whole thing in the tube pan. And it's not going to rise up a whole lot even though I put a whole tablespoon of baking powder in there because we've got the oats and the ground nuts in there. Now you could use pecans, pecans in this, but uh, they're going to add flavor. You're going to definitely taste them. Where the English walnuts, you don't really taste them that much. All right, now we've got to add our final two ingredients. 
that's going to be, this is whole berry, cranberry sauce, and this is Aldi's brand, and I tried these oh, a month or so ago. They've got tons of cranberries in them, a lot more so than Ocean Spray, certainly more than Walmart's brand. And so what I do, I mean, again, a whole can of whole berry cranberry sauce. <coughs> I boil um, a couple of cups of water in the microwave and dissolve all that gelled stuff off of it, off of that can, and then I'm going to drain them. Look how many cranberries I've got. I tried using uh, the uh, frozen cranberries and I tried using the fresh cranberries and I didn't like either one of them. So not in this dish, but in a couple of other things I had made. So we're gonna just shake that around and get some of that water out of them. See, they've got lots of whole berries in there. All right, so I'm gonna dump that in the bowl and now this is one cup of raisins, and I put those in boiling water also to soften them up. So it's just one cup. This is a two cup measure. So I had um, a good cup of water in there and put the raisins in with the boiling water. So I'm going to drain those. It makes them uh, plump up quite a bit. All right, so now we're going to dump those in. All right, let me set this aside. Let me get my little loaf pans ready. All right, so we're just going to mix the raisins and the uh, cranberries all in together with the uh, base dough here. It won't take long, just a little while. And you see that they're, they're kind of wet and the raisins are wet too, so that definitely adds more moisture. And one, I've ground up the apples, and of course that's going to add a lot more moisture also. And we've, I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees, and my guess is, I've never made these except in muffin form, but my guess is they, if they're going to need to cook uh, 30 to maybe even 45 minutes. All right, let me dump these in the pans and then we'll be right back. All right, here's what they look like in the pans. Now, you notice they're pretty full. These don't rise up very much because of the uh, ground up oats and the ground up walnuts. So they're not gonna rise up very much, but they're gonna be good. All right, y'all, I've gotta clean my kitchen up here and we'll be back when these get done. And again, I'm not sure how long to cook them. I'm just saying 30 to 45 minutes, but we're gonna see how long it takes. All right, we'll be back when they're done. All right, I just took the uh, cranberry raisin loaves out of the oven. They cooked exactly 45 minutes. So we're gonna let them cool in the pan for maybe 15 or 20 minutes. And then we're gonna come back and make a little glaze to go on them. All right, we'll be back. All right, we are ready to make a little glaze to go on these two uh, cranberry raisin loaves. So I've got about two tablespoons of butter, and I'm gonna put maybe three tablespoons or so of milk. And I've got my burner off now. I'm also gonna put maybe a tablespoon of honey in there, and that's to prevent the little glaze I'm gonna put on these from becoming sugary. So at least a tablespoon or so of honey. And I'm going to put in a little vanilla extract. Maybe a teaspoon. And just mix that around. And now we're going to add some confectionery sugar. Just regular confectionery sugar. Probably going to be, I don't know, a cup, maybe a cup and a half to two cups. We, we don't really want it as icing. We want it more of a glaze. All right, so it's going to take more than that. Just dumping it in. All right. 
right, so I'm going to beat this for a little while and get the lumps out, and we'll be back. All right, we've got our little glaze ready, and uh, it's got a few lumps in it, but I don't really care. I'm not going to pay any attention to that. Now, this, uh, these, both of these loaves are still a little bit warm. We want to just put as much on here as we can get on there. Some of it's going to run off, but that's okay. Just let it run all down. Now I think that the next time I fix this, I'm going to fix it in uh, a tube pan. And I think with a tube pan, it would probably take an hour to cook at about 350 degrees. I think that's about it. All right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And uh, Mr. Buck and I are both going to have a piece because we've already finished our main meal of the day. And I want to see how these turned out. So hold on a minute. All right, there's what it looks like. Let's move y'all around a little bit. Right there, it is super moist, and uh, we've got the glaze on it. Now, it is still warm, and I already know what these taste like because I made them into muffins, and they did come out very moist that way, too. All right, y'all, we will see y'all next time. Bye for now.